Right guys, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get his carrots and our onions ready for beer braising because it'll take quite a while. Now, <clears throat> if you've got thick carrots like this, I would like to try turning them. So what you do with this is you start at the top and you angle your knife towards you. And as you go down, you go back to the bottom. So you're making like a barrel shape. Now ideally what you do is you get like big carrots than on the donkey carrots and we just use this this bit round here as opposed to the core but it doesn't matter for what we're doing it's good practice for you and it's a skill <clears throat> so you just keep working round and you should have eight sides and that's a turned carrot like so so try and do those it doesn't matter if they're different sizes if they are a bit bigger than others just trim them down so they're the same size. Uh, they just can look a little bit messy if you look here because of that. But like I say, we're just practicing a skill. So, do a few of those. And then what we're going to do is prepare his onions. So, what we're going to do with these ideally is we're going to cook them down in the beer. So they go nice and tender. And then afterwards, we're gonna take them out, chill them, cool them a little so you can touch them, handle them. And then we're gonna cut them in half and we're gonna blacken them on one side. Uh, cooking in beer is brilliant. It actually brings out the sweetness of the vegetables. <clears throat> so you get uh, the nice sweet flavor of the veg coming through. Uh, but we're just gonna leave these whole. So just take your root, fairy bit off let's take the top off don't take too much off you just want to take that bit off so that you get rid of any skin that is in the top and just peel the first layer off also so onion and carrots in and then this bottle of beer i've given you it's not for drinking for cooking with so we're just going to put this bottle of beer in um, what you're going to have to do in the skill with this is as it's braising you have to keep turning these onions on the heat so they get evenly cooked so i'm just going to put them on a the heat bring it to the boil then drop it down to a simmer right next thing we're going to do is we're going to concentrate as mushroom duck salad so we're going to chop his mushrooms up slice them nice and thinly and go back through them what you need to do is you need to keep chopping this so it's as fine as you can possibly get it. Uh, <clears throat> if you don't have a blender or anything, that's a very good way of doing it and getting it nice and smooth. Basically what we're making is like a mushroom pate to wrap around our beef. So you just keep going with those until you get them nice and fine. So if you keep going, You'll end up with like a mushroom paste like this. I'll just keep cutting through it. What I'm going to do with that now, put that to one side. The next thing we need to do is finally dice up some shallots. So again, these need to be chopped very nice and fine. You're never going to get a shallot as fine as a mushroom. Uh, but obviously just try and get this as fine as you can if you don't get it fine it won't stick you won't be able to make that like pate sort of paste i saved a few back i meant to tell you that before if you haven't my my fault so when we're doing the shallots take your top off as i said fine as possible so when you're going down your shallot And you're dicing it make sure you're hardly using your finger make sure your knife's very sharp then if you can you're going to try and cut in twice lengthways because that's going to make sure that you dice it a lot finer when you come to dice it out and then really really fine so 
So once you've got all your shallots nice and finely chopped, just go through it a few times, make sure that you haven't missed any little bits. As I said, if it's not fine, it's not going to make a nice paste to stick around the beef. So that's the shallots. That's his mushroom. We just need a couple of cloves of garlic now. Right now, garlic, you can chop it nice and fine like the shallots. Uh, for what I'm doing, I'm just using this little plane. If you haven't got one of these, use the smallest setting on a grater if you want. It just makes sure that it's nice and fine and you're not gonna get big chunks of garlic running through it. If you haven't got one, you can always do it the old school way where you make it like a paste, which I'll show you in a sec. So that's my garlic paste there. <coughs> Classically what you can do, is you get your garlic clove, finely chop it the best you can. Just run through it. Then we take a pinch of salt. On top, axe as a grinding agent and then basically all you do is you just grind the salt into the garlic and you end up with a paste so you just do that a few times basically you're just putting your knife nice and flat so that's a way of doing it without grater Right, so to start cooking this duck style, what we're going to do is a touch of oil. Excuse my pans, they're probably as old as me. They're still good job. So a little bit of oil. Medium heat, you don't want it too high. I'm just going to start off with our shallots. We just want to sweat them. And the garlic can go in at this point as well. So what we're going to do is just start cooking these before we add the mushrooms. So we want to soften the shallots and then when we add the mushroom, the idea of that is we're trying to get as much water out as we can so it doesn't make the pastry soggy. Meanwhile, I've got these cooking away. So I'm just going to keep making sure that I constantly keep turning those onions so they get evenly cooked. So a pinch of salt, some fresh ground black pepper is nice in this, I don't normally season with pepper as you know, but if it's freshly ground it works really well. So while they're sweating, I'm going to get another pan on. I'm going to get it scorching hot. To be honest, I'm probably best off swapping them. So if you notice, I've added, uh, hardly added any oil in here. I don't want any extra moisture. Just a little bit to start sweating off these onions. You don't want to colour them, take the raw, raw edge off them. have these beautiful pieces of fillet of beef they are a bit dark 
Don't worry about that, that's just because it's been vat packed. What we're going to do is we're going to season these up, plenty of salt, and then we're going to sear them in the pan just to colour the outside and seal it. So what I've done is just got a little plate, plenty of salt, roll it round in that salt, make sure it's got a nice crust on it. You want it well seasoned, because obviously we're not going to be able to season it up afterwards. Right, so when your shallots are cooked, the mushrooms are going to go in. And as I said, we're not adding any moisture to this, we want to basically get the water out so once your shorts are sweated off mushrooms in round the pan make sure they're incorporated and drop the heat very low we don't want to color any of this and if you get anything that's starting to color take your pan off if your shorts are coloring too much take them out cool the pan down i appreciate it's not like when you're at college and obviously you can just go get another pan and swap it we're at home i have two frying pans this is it So my beef, I've left this out for about 15 minutes before I started cooking. I've got everything out. You want to try and bring a piece of meat to room temperature. And again, I'm putting plenty of seasoning on it. Something like a fillet can take it, especially when you've got these beautiful pieces that we've got here. You wouldn't think that was a piece off a fillet tail. You'd think it was off the main part. It's absolutely stunning. If you have a piece that's quite long, so I do know that I saw some in the bags are quite long like that. All I want you to do is seal it in the pan and then fold it back on itself when you rest it and chill it before you make your wellington. That way you'll be able to make it like a little parcel like I'm going to show you. So this pan's scorching hot. I'm going to add the tiniest bit of oil to it, not a lot. And I'm going to take my beef. And I'm literally just trying to char that beef off. So all we have there is a little bit of colour. Like that. Bit of colour each side. Sorry about that noise, I'm going to have to put my instructor on or my fire alarm's going to go off. Remember, you're not cooking this, and then you want to sear it all the way around. Always keep me in your eye on this duck cell as well. Keep flattening it out. The flatter out you get it in the pan, the more contact it has with the pan, the more moisture that's going to come off. Right, so when that's had a sear on all sides, it looks like this. Put it on a plate and let it cool down. So I've got my steak here. All I'm going to do with it, 
get a pastry brush, if not, just get a thin layer on it somehow. I'm just going to brush this with some Dijon mustard. Make sure it's got a nice coating all the way around. Obviously this is part of the flavour, but it will also help the duck cell to stick to the beef. So a nice coating all the way around, and then make sure you get the sides. If you do that while it's cooling, it will start to soak in some of the flavour of that mustard, which is what you want. And if you look at my duck cell now, it's dried out, it's getting that like damp sand sort of look to it. So at this point, I'll put that on a plate or a bowl and let it cool, and you can have a cup of tea because you need to let this cool right down. Right, so what I'm going to do with these little mushrooms, I'm just giving them a white with a damp cloth, get off any excess dirt or peat or anything like that. I'm just going to trim the stalks off. And I want to do it back at knife, hold my mushroom, get my knife. And I start there and I do the same thing like I'm turning a carrot. What we're trying to do is get a nice pattern on that mushroom. Bit fiddly these little ones. Once you're going all the way around like that, get your knife and you just put your knife in and you make a five point star. Like that. So like I say, you can do a couple of them for garnish, saute those off in a little bit of butter, just look a little pretty. Right, so I've took my veg out of the beer, and then what I'm going to do, is with my onions I'm just going to slice them lengthways like this. Be careful because they're softened, so they've been in about 45 minutes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put those in a hot pan later. Right, so now we're going to start building our Wellington. So I've put Parma ham down. And what I want to do on this Parma ham is create a nice thin layer of duck cell. You put too much of this on, it's just going to be like a massive layer of mushroom around a bit of beef. And we haven't got the biggest pieces of beef in the world. So you want to make sure that it's nice and thin. Now you'll have to analyse how your fillets look and how they're going to fit with the parma ham wrapping around them. The idea is you want to completely encase the beef in this mushroom. So, <clears throat> take my beef. And then what I'm going to do, lift this up and roll this around my beef. To be fair, I'm probably better going the other way. So I'm just using the cling film just to help me get this beef wrapped. Make sure that it's completely sealed with the ham. Like so. And then I'm just going to lift this up. And twist it. That's going to go in the fridge now for a good 45 minutes. Right, for a sauce, I'm going to start with a little bit of butter.
and then I had a shallot left so I thought I'd just utilize it so clove of garlic just smashed up roughly chopped that's going to go in there and then I'm just going to put this shallot in I've roughly chopped it if you haven't got one left you haven't I've got two massive ones and a lot of one in my bag so I'm going to utilize it <clears throat> if you want to start it this way get yourselves a little bit of uh, onion if you've got any in your cupboard or anything like that that's totally fine if not don't worry it's going to be the same process Sweat that off and we get a little bit of colour on it. Right, so what I've done now, I've added in about 15 grams more of butter and I'm going to add 15 grams of flour. I'm going to make this into a brown roux, it's a brown sauce. I don't like doing sauces this way, but when while we're at home doing like an Espanol kind of sauce is probably what we're going to have to do because we haven't got the facilities to make stocks and roast bones off and then have a stock on for four or five hours before we start cooking. So basically you just want enough flour in just to make that butter and flour combined but you don't want it so it's like a roux, you want it so it's like foaming like that, just like that. So I'm just going to cook this off, get a little bit of colour on it. As I said it's a brown sauce so we need to make sure that the roux is brown. We also want to cook out the floweriness as well. So to about 15 gram of butter, I'd say 10 gram of flour. Just getting a bit of colour now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding this beer. So if you look it goes like when you're making a velouté or something like that. So we keep adding a bit of that beer in. If you haven't got a sauté pan like this, don't worry, a sauce pan is completely fine. But again, keep adding it and the liquid until it starts thickening like this. So this is kind of like an old school velouté. Which is still important to know how to make them. If you haven't got stock that day and you need to make a sauce this way, then you can. Now, I want to try and get all this beer in while it's thickened. And then I'm going to add my beef stock. So you should have some beef stock granules in your box. If you mix those with about 500ml of water, give it a taste. If it's too strong, add more water. Let that cook. Get your beef stock ready. So I just use the same pan I had my beer in. Uh, I just put the beef stock in, added a bit of water to give it a little taste. You don't want it to be too heavy, but you want to taste the beef. And the same process, we're going to start adding this in, a little at a time. 
Uh, it'll be quite a light sauce because obviously we've used bug, which is like a light, it's a lager, isn't it? It's not really beer. But it'll just give it that flavour. So again, like I say, the wider your pan's base, the quicker it'll reduce down. I want to try and get all this beef stock in. I want to try and get a good flavour going. So I'm just going to add the rest of that in. Not all my stock's reduced, so that edge can go into it. Gets dissolved. I'm going to pass this off later anyway. Get all that out. So let's have that like beefy. Beef flavour with a bit of beer coming in the background. So then I'm just going to transfer this to a saucepan. And I want to reduce that by half at least. Right, so my beef's chilled. Nice shape on it. So what we're going to do now <clears throat> is we're going to take this puff pastry sheet and I'm going to place it on some cling film. So I'm going to take my beef and set this on here. There's two ways you can do this. You can cut that in half, sit that on top and make it like a little pie. Or that way I find there's a lot of pastry. So what I do is I try and like manipulate it into like a little log. So kind of like if you ever watch Gordon Ramsay on how he does it. Obviously he gives people like a great big slab of fillet because they're paying £100 for his food all the time. So <clears throat> obviously people need to get value for money with what they're paying. Colour them yolks. Anyway. So a bit of egg wash, this is just gonna act as a bit of glue to seal it up. So I just lift this and I start to roll the pastry around, pull this back and where it's going to join, put a little bit of egg wash and I join it like that and with my knife trim off the excess paste we don't need. Right so and make sure that's sealed. So then what we're going to do is we're going to basically make sure that we get a seal down the sides here. So what I'm going to do is flip this on its back and I'm going to make a little cut there and then there. So that bit is going to sit out of my fold. That's what I'm going to stick to. So I'll just make sure that that's stuck together on the bottom. Same again on the other side. A little cut down there. A little cut down there. I'll roll this back over. And what I need to do now is shape this around the side of the beef. So. Bit of egg wash on that bottom part, a little bit on here, and then make sure it looks nice and pretty. Try and get this nice and even, sticking it to that bottom part of the paste with your finger, like so. 
and then trim around like that. Make sure it's nice and sealed. Same again on the other side. A bit of egg wash there. And on this part of the paste, make sure it all sticks. And then press that down. Make sure it's nice and neat. Press it into each other. Right, so, and again, trim that excess. Don't cut too close to it. You obviously, you need some there, else it's all just gonna spew out when it goes in the oven. Press that back down. Then what I like to do then, get a nice shape on it. Some more cling. Put this in. So it's nice and tight, roll it up. And like we would a piece of meat, we're going to squeeze the ends and we're going to roll it. And that's going to go back in the fridge now for another 20 minutes just to firm up. Right, so that's my sauce. Uh, I boiled that up, reduced it down. Uh, nice consistency, you don't want it too thick, you don't want it like sludge or anything like that. It wants to have a nice beefy flavour with that subtle hint of the bitter beer at the back. So, once this has rested in the fridge, what we're going to do, take it out of the cling. Make sure the crease where it joins goes to the bottom. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to take some egg wash and make sure it's coated all over. What you can do at this point now, you can be creative. So you take a little knife, you can uh, Draw some little vines on it or some little leaves or whatever you want to do. I just like to score the top just so when it bakes when it opens up. Just looks nice. You can crisscross it if you wanted, whatever you want to do. Classically, it has like vines and little leaves on. We're going to do that then. <clears throat> Pop it back in the fridge for five minutes so the egg sets. Get it back out, egg wash it again, and then we put it in an oven as hot as it goes. Finish now. So all we're going to serve it with is the onions, some wilted spinach and the carrots from earlier. So I'm going to start off with my carrots in the pan and I'm going to put a nice bit of butter in so I can glaze them. Uh, I would never do this in a restaurant but I'm going to cook the spinach in with the carrots because I'm aware not everyone's got £10,000. I haven't got £10,000. <coughs> and then what I'm going to do with my onions is I'm just going to salt on top hot pan touch of oil I'm just going to get a nice char on these So 
So I'm doing with that butter is I'm just warming those carrots back through. Touch of seasoning. So when you put your Wellington in, depending on the thickness of your steak, the ones I had were quite thick. Uh, I'm going to put them in for about 20 minutes. If you have got your temperature probe at home, you want it cooked to about 50 degrees, and then you want to let it rest for five to ten, let it rest for five to ten minutes. Obviously, so that it can come back down to temperature. So when you slice it, everything doesn't run out. The carrots there warming through nicely. And then I'm going to put a big handful of spinach in. And just put the lid on that. And then I'll fish my carrots out at the end. Got a bit of colour coming, a little bit of butter in. And then in with those, I've got my little turn mushrooms. I'm gonna pop these in the pan and cook these off with some garnish. So I'll show you how beautiful these onions look. Look at them. You can always baste them with a little bit more golden colour on them. We're not trying to burn them like I do on solid top, we just want a little bit of a char on them. With this sauce, what I'm doing is put a little noggin of butter in. And all I'm doing is I'm just basically keeping it moving on the heat. Very low heat, you don't want it too high. And this is just to finish off the sauce and give it a nice shine. You just keep going till all that butter's dissolved. If you look, you can see the shine on it now. Right, I just want to show you this has just come out of it. This is what I meant by scoring it. So just run your knife down, do some lines. Classically they do these lines with little leaves on the end. Make sure your paste is nice and cooked. And then you need to make sure that it's not got a soggy bottom. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna let that rest for five to 10 minutes. Right, so I'm gonna plate this up now. <clears throat> so I'm gonna start. <clears throat> it's got a little bit of spinach and these are his little turn carrots and get his onion on and we've got these little turn mushrooms And to carve the beef. So what we do is take both ends off. That just gets rid of that big part of duck cell and anything like that. And then we carve straight down the centre. And I've cut this medium rare. I'm just going to sit that on. A little bit of gravy. 
just in centre. So yeah, not as ambitious as what we normally do, but it's a classic and it's going to taste beautiful. Enjoy.